Uh, we're going to call to order our first hearing of the evening. This is the uh, seven o'clock hearing, and it's on the application of Timothy and Lauren Lombard. Uh, they reside at 10 Rockwell Avenue in Milton, and uh, they're proposing to add a uh, farmer's style porch uh, to their residence. The uh, porch is uh, supposed to be built at a distance of 13.8 feet from the front lot line and technically under the bylaw 16.4 feet is required uh, and uh, the proposed porch is 4.9 feet uh, or maybe 5.4 feet from the left side lot line when 10 feet is required under the bylaw. Uh, this uh, property was uh, constructed in 1930 uh, actually before I was born uh, and is a single family home uh, and it's considered uh, uh, dimensionally pre-existing non-conforming and as a uh, as a result of that the uh, applicant uh, represented by attorney Bob Sheffield of uh, Milton Massachusetts uh, is seeking a finding from the board uh, that the uh, uh, proposed addition is not more detrimental to the neighborhood than what currently exists. Um, my name is John Leonard. I'm chairman of the Board of Appeals. With me uh, uh, this evening is uh, Board of Appeals uh, member Jeff Mullen and Board of Appeals uh, member uh, Nick Gray. Uh, the rules of the board are such that we'll first hear from Mr. Sheffield uh, and any witnesses he wants to present, uh, and then we'll hear from any, uh, uh, well, I'd give the board members an opportunity to ask any questions. And then we'll hear from uh, any uh, uh, questions or comments which uh, uh, any of the viewers uh, would want to uh, consider. Um, and then we'll consider and vote on this application. Um, I, I've just basically summarized the, uh, 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 the advertisement uh, as uh, additional, and we'll have as evidence here uh, the application and the, uh, the various uh, plans that have been submitted in support of the application. Uh, Mr. Sheffield has uh, supplied us with uh, a, a series of uh, neighbor and the butter uh, assents to the uh, uh, application um, saying that they've uh, re reviewed the plans and they're convinced that uh, this uh, proposal uh, by the Lombards uh, will be a significant improvement to the lovely neighborhood and they do not have any issues regarding the proposed changes. I'm going to read very briefly some of the names so that I can, uh, but it looks like Peter Robo or Ruto at 6 Rockwell Avenue, Regina Lundgren at 11 Rockwell, uh, looks like uh, Patricia, um, I can't read the last name. It looks like La Follette or something like that at 17 Rockwell. Ashley and Jim Gibbons at 35 Rockwell. Uh, May Murphy at 8 Rockwell. Uh, Evelyn Murphy at 7 Rockwell. Uh, another name I can't read. It looks like J. Espen something at 10 Rockwell. Um, uh, the, the owner of 1 Howard Street. Um, uh, Katie Carlson, 19 Rockwell Avenue, Cassie Hunt at 36 Rockwell Avenue, uh, the, uh, uh, the owner or resident at uh, uh, looks like 84 Washington Street. It starts with A and there's a squiggly mark after that. It looks like Cheryl Zam at 16 Rockwell, Ellen Centegenario at 78 Washington Street, uh, Sheila McKean's at 81 Washington Street, and then the name that's impossible to decipher, but they uh, reside or own uh, three uh, Rockwell uh, Place. So we'll have that uh, as evidence for this hearing. Um, Mr. Sheffield, it's always great to see you again. Uh, welcome back to the Board of Appeals. I see Mr. Lombard there uh, together with uh, Lauren and uh, uh, two members of the uh, Lombard family. Before we get to Mr. Sheffield, do you want to introduce uh, uh, your children to those uh, watching TV here? Oh, sure. This is Eamon. Say hi. Hi. Hi, Eamon. How are you? Look at that smile. And who is this? That's Eliza. Say hi. <laughs> <laughs> he spoke up nice and loud and clear. This is my, this is my warming pad. This is his warming wow. pad. Bed. That's great. Mr. Sheffield, welcome back to the Board of Appeals. We're delighted to hear from you. Thank you. 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. Uh, I'm attorney Bob Sheffield, as I said, I uh, both reside in Melton and my office is in East Melton Square. And I'm very pleased to, rec to uh, represent uh, Tim and uh, Lauren uh, Lombard uh, and their children of 10 Rockwell Avenue. Uh, Rockwell Avenue is in East Milton Square and um, um, uh, perpendicular to Rockwell Ave is Rockwell Place, which backs up to uh, uh, properties that are in uh, partially in Milton and partially in Quincy. So it's uh, in East Milton, very close to the Quincy line. Um, the uh, Lombards uh, uh, came to Milton in 2014, uh, have become quite active in the community. Uh, Timothy has been appointed uh, uh, by the uh, town uh, moderator to uh, the school building needs committee. Um, and uh, uh, Lauren is also um, quite active. Um, they uh, live in uh, a relatively small house and uh, of the uh, 49 uh, parcels on uh, Rockwell um, Ave and Washington Street, uh, theirs is the second smallest in the entire uh, uh, neighborhood. Um, what they are trying to do is put on a, a, a porch, uh, a farmer's style porch to the front of their, uh, uh, to the front of their house. Um, this will give a protected area for the children to play um, and uh, uh, give uh, additional uh, living space to the uh, existing house. Uh, the house was uh, uh, constructed in uh, 1930. Uh, it's a very attractive house. Uh, you have a picture of it in your uh, materials uh, and it's a very attractive uh, neighborhood. Um, the uh, This is an unusual case in which uh, Part of the uh, variance, the variance for side lot line uh, uh, is uh, specifically related to the shape of the property. Most of the time the property is a rectangle. In this case, it's almost a parallelogram because uh, the, uh, the lot uh, lot line runs perpendicular to uh, uh, parallel to Washington Street um, rather than perpendicular to Rockwell Ave. Um, so uh, uh, the existing uh, uh, house uh, is um, uh, five foot uh, four, um, uh, 5.4 feet from the uh, side lot line, uh, but because the uh, side lot line uh, is not uh, uh, in keeping with the house, uh, this would reduce it to 4.9 inches. However, this would not be a, a, a problem at all with the uh, neighbor who owns that lot, insofar as the uh, neighbor's house fronts on uh, uh, on Washington Street, and then behind their house is a garage, and then you have the uh, um, the uh, property owned by the Lombards. Um, the uh, other variance, <coughs> the other variance that is being requested is a a, a front um, front lot line uh, in which the uh, uh, the uh, it would be uh, 13.8 feet from the uh, front lot line uh, where the bylaw requires uh, 16.4 feet. Uh, so this is about a two and a half foot uh, um, variance. Uh, 
Um, however, it should be noted that the house next door has a, a front setback of 12.8 feet, and this would be 13.8 feet, so that it is not uh, uh, incompatible with the uh, uh, with the neighborhood. Um, both the uh, uh, all the abutters and all the abutters to abutters. Uh, and all the people directly across the street um, have uh, signed the letter uh, which uh, represents uh, 15 uh, neighboring houses, neighboring properties. Um, so it seems to have uh, significant uh, approval for, by the uh, neighborhood. Um, and um, uh, it seems that uh, they, by their uh, signatures, have indicated that they did not feel that it would be substantially detrimental to the neighborhood, which would be the uh, basis for the special permit determination that uh, the uh, 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 that uh, this uh, addition to uh, pre-existing non-conforming property. Uh, could be uh, 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 granted uh, the uh, special permit. Um, and uh, also the uh, uh, shape of the property is uh, significant in relationship to the uh, side lot variance. Um, and the shape of the uh, property is one of the uh, uh, requirements of uh, uh, are permissible reasons for issuing a, a variance. And uh, the uh, front uh, setback of variance, uh, I think, would be relatively uh, de minimis insofar as uh, the house after the attachment of the uh, six foot uh, uh, porch would still be uh, have a greater setback than the house next door. Um, for these reasons, uh, I would uh, request that the uh, board favorably consider the uh, request for uh, variances and special permit uh, to allow this to uh, be completed. Okay, thank you, Mr. Sheffield. Let me just ask you one question that I have that uh, the Lombards need to construct if they get the variances, uh, this uh, farmer's uh, porch um, in uh, conformity with the plans uh, that have been filed with the board in substantial conformity. That, that is correct. And they also uh, plan to uh, uh, paint it and design it so that it uh, uh, fits in with the appearance of the existing house. Uh, let, let me uh, just say, uh, I hope you're feeling better, Mr. Sheffield, and your, your voice comes back to, uh, to its normal tones. Uh, let me uh, see if any of the board members uh, have any uh, uh, questions of, of you or the Lombards. Uh, Mr. Mullins, do you have any, any questions regarding this application? Uh, John, it's actually maybe a question for you. Do you I, I, know, I thought I heard uh, Bob say that there was there are 15 of the abutters signed off. Do you know if the Aaron's and the Tams were on that list? Yeah, Sheila Aaron is on the list at uh, 81 Washington Street. Uh, I don't see the 16 Rockwell. Uh, yeah. Yes, uh, there there is. I, I thought it was Cheryl Zam, but it, it, it certainly could be uh, Cheryl. Uh, it's not Tam. Murphy. It's not Murphy. Okay. No. They, uh, they are both on this list. Okay. Uh, so I, I don't have any questions. Thank uh, you. Okay, Mr. Mr. Gray, do you uh, have any questions? Of the uh, I do not. Okay. Um, well, I, I don't have any further questions. Uh, let's uh, see. Is there any member of the, uh, uh, the public out there uh, who either has any questions of the uh, Lombards or who wishes to uh, otherwise be heard? in support of these applications for variances. And the record indicates there's no such person present. Um, is there anybody uh, present 
uh, whether by uh, video or by phone, uh, who uh, wishes to speak uh, in any way in opposition to this application for variance. Okay, and so there's no such person uh, present. So, uh, Mr. Sheffield, uh, unless you have something further to add, uh, we'll end the evidence portion of this hearing and uh, discuss these variances in open session and, and vote on these variances uh, uh, promptly. I have nothing further to add, uh, okay. unless anybody has any question. Okay, great. Um, there are no questions and no oppositions and uh, other than the 16 or 18 assents, written assents that you filed. And we, we certainly thank uh, uh, you and Mr. and Mrs. Lombard for undertaking the effort to secure those uh, signatures. I, I know that can be a pain in the neck, uh, trying to find people and getting them available and explaining things, uh, but it certainly is uh, uh, highly probative evidence here uh, uh, regarding this application. So uh, let's, uh, let's see, Mr. Mullins, you want to be heard regarding this application? This is a special permit, right, John? Uh, two variances, I believe, uh, but with a, with a fine with a finding. A special permit and two variances. Uh, well, that's right, a special permit and a finding uh, under section four that the proposed addition is not more detrimental to the neighborhood than what currently exists. And we have a side yard variance and a front yard variance. Right, so then that's actually my question. That's, the ad says you're just seeking a special permit in the front. Right. And no need for the variance because of the SAC case last year, right? So right. this is one of those non-conforming cases where we need to find whether or not the Increase it or not, it's a pre previous stuff that's probably not conforming you. So we need to find whether or not the the the, um, the increase in the non-conformity is less is not more detrimental to the neighborhood than what currently exists, which is what boss right. uh, you know the tenor of boss uh, testimony was. So I think um, I think on the basis of that, I think it's clear that you know it's a very modest uh, mo uh, violation of the technical terms of the front and inside. Yeah, requirements. It's a tastefully done and well presented application um, uh, that's consistent with the overall neighborhood and in some ways less less uh, violent of, of, the, of the bylaws requirements than other properties. So I, I think it's um, I think it's um, well within the uh, standard of not being more detrimental to the neighborhood than what currently exists, and I vote to support it. The only question I have for the applicant, I probably should have asked in the previous. Piece was whether or not these improvements were going to be done immediately or, or within, uh, let's say, the calendar year. They're going to start as soon as we get the decision and it's put on hold in the town clerk's office for 20 days. Okay. And the uh, plans will go to the building commission for review so he can review them during that 28 day period. Okay. And no further questions. I vote to support. Thank you. Okay, uh, uh, Mr. Gray, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Leonard. Um, I also um, think the application was uh, well presented, and uh, this is um, one of those cases that's um, clearly within the type of um, special permit that we allow routinely uh, for projects such as this. I mean, we're looking at a uh, you know the uh, it, the standard is even less than a variance. It's just it can't. Um, be substantially more, um, you know, detrimental to the neighborhood than what's there currently. And I note that the side, the side, very, you know, uh, dimension is changing by half a foot in a neighborhood that's got small lots. So, in in my view, that the, that this clearly fits within the realm of the standard for the special permit, and I would um, be in favor of granting it. Well, I, I agree with my colleagues. I think the application was very well presented by Mr. Sheffield. I, I think the uh, applicants uh, showed uh, due diligence here in securing uh, the a sense of uh, almost all of the neighbors and, and going through uh, the arduous task of showing them the plans and, uh, and getting their consents. Uh, I think these are, uh, considering the neighborhood and uh, the age of the uh, property and its location, uh, bordering on the de minimis type of uh, uh, variance, 
um, from my view, even if variances were required here, and I think Mr. Mullen is absolutely correct, they're, they're not required, uh, I would be willing to vote for the variances because I think they're, uh, they're warranted. We see this uh, type of application, uh, particularly in the East Milton area, where lots are small and uh, things are a little bit tight, and we have young and growing families uh, who uh, have present needs that uh, uh, have to be accounted for. Um, and uh, when these two beautiful children uh, start to go to school and, uh, and, and get older, uh, you're going to find that they have uh, additional needs for uh, larger uh, uh, bedrooms and uh, perhaps uh, larger bathrooms. So um, the, the board uh, in, in its history has always gone out of its way to try to accommodate uh, uh, growing families uh, like the long pods because they're the type of uh, um, uh, lively and young people that uh, make this whole town young and keeps it on its toes. So I, uh, I intend to vote in favor of this uh, um, um, section four finding that the proposed addition is not more uh, detrimental to the neighborhood than what currently exists. I think that uh, standard is, is met uh, uh, in a blink. Um, Could so I clarify something, Mr. Chairman? Absolutely. That what you are voting on is number one, a special permit that the uh, proposed addition would not be substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood. Right. But also two variances. One is a side lot variance and the other is a front uh, setback variance. So those are variances. Well, I, I understand that. The, the question that Mr. Mullen raised at the beginning of the hearing uh, is, is whether we even needed to, uh, to vote those variances, uh, whether they become irrelevant under the circumstances as long as we make the Section 4 finding. Uh, from, from my viewpoint here, but I would like to hear from my colleagues, uh, I'd be willing to grant the variances and uh, whether they're technically needed or not and make the section four findings um, under these circumstances and uh, not uh, leave to chance uh, the, the issue of whether they're required or not. Mr. Mullen, do you want to be heard? We haven't been doing that. I know we haven't yeah, been doing that. Yes, yes, yes. Joe didn't cite that in his application and the ad didn't cite it. So I mean, I wouldn't be against, I'd appreciate Nick's comments, but if we wanted to put a line in the, in the, uh, in the hearing, in the, um, in the, in the, in the decision, but I thought, I mean, procedurally, it's just made it a lot easier to consider these matters. These are so frequent, you know, and we've probably done 20 of these since JC's decision. Well, that's right. And to thank God for the SJC, uh, mm -hmm. and for a uh, small, uh, and, and young homeowners like the Lombards, uh, but Mr. Uh, you know, Mr. Gray, do you want to be heard on uh, whether we uh, should go? Yeah, I, mean, I don't think we need the variance, but I think as you as you said, Mr. Leonard, um, this this if e even if a variance were required, I, I think the facts support the uh, finding for a variance. But I agree with Mr. Mullen that I'm I'm not sure that it's necessary after the SJC's case. But I'll, I'm happy to uh, accommodate. Um, whatever you gentlemen think. Yeah, and, and, and in my view, the, the question is, are, are, they, are they warranted on the evidence? I guess the answer is yes. Yeah. Uh, needed, I, I don't think they are, but what, what's, the harm in, what's the harm in granting them uh, and, and uh, allowing the, <laughs> allowing the uh, Lombards to get this behind them and, and get their contractor into the field and get this uh, porch uh, done? So. Um, I, I think we certainly can uh, uh, so indicate in, in, the, uh, uh, in the decision uh, to, uh, to avoid any risk that uh, uh, some person may think that they, they are uh, technically required. So uh, although- I'm, I'm only concerned that our building commissioner might think that they're technically required and then no, of course, no, 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 no. we're just reading from his letter. His letter doesn't say it. His letter wants a special permit. Correct. He's writing it this way for a while now. Yeah. Yeah, so, so I, I think we can craft this in such a way that we can, uh, we can indicate to the building commissioner and uh, uh, the public at large here that these uh, uh, variances, if necessary, uh, 
e either were or will be granted. We, we can use that. Excellent. Um, so all those in favor of, uh, of uh, granting the relief requested uh, uh, by the, uh, the applicants uh, and their attorney, Mr. Uh, uh, Sheffield, uh, please say aye. 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 Hi. Uh, okay, so congratulations on, on your finding uh, and in special permits to, uh, and, and variances to the extent that they're required. I guess the, the only question here is uh, uh, you, you have contractors in the field ready to, to run onto the property and attach that porch. Um, so uh, I, I think what, uh, I think I'll take this, if, if you don't mind, Mr. Mullen, I'll, I'll take this uh, the decision and and uh, do my very best to crank it out in short order so that the, the clock can start to run. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, members of the committee. And uh, uh, I appreciate your, uh, your vote and your efforts. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, congratulations uh, to the Lombards. And uh, uh, we'll, as I say, we'll do our best to get this paperwork prepared and filed. And uh, congratulations on your, uh, your, your new porch. Thank you. Thank you for your help and thank you for your nice words. Thank you. And so we'll, this, this hearing will be uh, concluded. What is concluded? Okay. Final. This is the last one. I just want to keep my paperwork together. Am I going to oh, get that? Am I going to get that file? Yeah, Otherwise, this is, this is what I'll walk out without it. Okay. Okay. Our next, uh, Mr. Corcoran, are you all ready? I am ready. Okay. I see Mr. Lazarus uh, there. So uh, let me uh, uh, call to order our second uh, hearing of the evening. And uh, this is a continued hearing on the application of Nicholas and Pamela Lazarus at 255 Adams Street, um, seeking, thank you, um, to uh, have a finding here under uh, Section 3BF of the uh, zoning bylaw uh, so as to allow a, a separate uh, dwelling unit uh, within an accessory structure on their uh, uh, their property. Uh, the original uh, application here was dated on 12-4-2019, um, and we had a hearing on this matter on January 23rd, 2020, uh, and it was continued to, to this time uh, so that there could be communications between uh, Mr. Corcoran, uh, Mr. Edward J. Corcoran, uh, alias Ned Corcoran, uh, on behalf of the uh, Mr. and Mrs. Lazarus with uh, the building uh, commissioner regarding the, uh, uh, the facts here and the use of this uh, uh, accessory structure uh, to be occupied by uh, children of uh, Mr. and Mrs. Uh, Lazarus under uh, the unique circumstances of their case. So, uh, uh, just for the sake of the record on this hearing, uh, my name is John Leonard. I'm chairman of the Board of Appeals uh, with us uh, by a uh, remote or video conferencing. Uh, is uh, board member Nick Gray and uh, with us in the hearing room um, is uh, board member uh, Jeffrey Mullen. Um, and so, uh, Mr. Corcoran, do you, uh, why don't we toss the ball to you and you can bring us up to date as to uh, uh, where you stand in your discussions with uh, the building commissioner uh, regarding uh, the use of this um, accessory dwelling. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Um, if you recall, at the close of the hearing on January 23rd, the board requested that we prepare a letter that would be jointly signed by uh, the Lazarus and the members of the board directed to Mr. Prondack um, regarding the uh, proposed use uh, of, the, of the pool house as a uh, caretaker residence, um, particularly for uh, Mr. Lazarus's daughter um, and her husband uh, starting later this summer. 
the board requested that we draft a letter, share it with Mr. Prondack, uh, and that we do an annual renewal letter to the board, to the building commissioner each year uh, that the, that the, the pool house would be, con would be used for the purposes of a caretaker uh, residence. I did draft that letter. I shared it with Mr. Prondack. He had, uh, there are 10 uh, numbered paragraphs in the letter. Uh, the original letter had nine numbered paragraphs. He asked me to include the 10th uh, that would say that the, the letter agreement would terminate upon the sale of the premises to an un unrelated buyer and the vacating of the premises by the Lazaruses um, and otherwise provided that the, that the letter agreement would remain in force and effect uh, in the event that they convey the prop premises to a realty trust or other sim similar entity that might, as long as they would continue residence therein. Uh, Mr. Prondack agreed with the uh, inclusion of that um, letter. So I had Mr. and Mrs. Lazarus print it and sign it. You'll note that there was a, that I, when I forwarded the letter to them, I forgot to delete the draft uh, date. So I crossed through that uh, on, the, on the originals that I shared with the board. Uh, for its review uh, and signature. And based on that, uh, unless the board has specific issues or concerns with the language of the letter that I'd be happy to discuss, we'd ask that the board would review, approve it, sign it, and then close it up. Close yeah, it up. I, I have to confess, uh, Mr. Corcoran, that your memory uh, uh, is not the same as mine. Um, I, I believe, uh, but uh, I don't think it amounts to a big deal that there was a discussion as to uh, the uniqueness of Mr. and Mrs. Lazarus' personal situation uh, and the uniqueness of this property. Yes. And the, uh, the, dwell the main dwelling on the property and he had the accessory structure and that um, um, we, we thought that uh, certain- That's right. The, the condition. Yeah, the, this is an old mansion style dwelling um, that had been substantially restored by the Lazarus when they purchased it in the early 1990s. Uh, it's a very large dwelling. The Lazarus has spent at least half the year uh, elsewhere uh, on the Cape and in Florida and other places. Uh, so it's vacant and it was, and at the time uh, that this originally arose, there was a, they had the property actually, the carriage house leased to another couple who was serving uh, in, a, in some form as caretaker um, at the time. They since vacated the premises prior to the, the termination of their lease, uh, but it is the Lazarus's intention to have their uh, adult daughter and her husband move into the carriage house uh, over the summer. And they would serve as full-time residents in the carriage house and caretakers uh, of the property and as the Lazarus themselves, as they now begin to age. Yeah, I think that that's exactly right. And the, uh, the, the, the really the question became, this was a, a rather uh, old uh, section of the bylaw. Um, and it was written many, many years ago. Uh, and and uh, the, the nature of uh, uh, modern structures uh, don't uh, fit exactly within the four corners of the uh, the language of the uh, the bylaw, uh, but on, on the other hand, uh, the Lazarus, uh, according to the board, I think, uh, felt that um, their their use of the uh, premises uh, was condition was uh, consistent with the uh, the intent of the bylaw, if not exactly the words of the bylaw. Right. Um, and, and in this instance, uh, uh, the bylaw, for example, talks about the accessory structure being a garage or a stable in which uh, family living quarters uh, can be occupied. And um, that, that was 50 years ago. And so uh, that, that, that became the question. And so we wanted um, uh, you to, uh, to talk with the building inspector with the Lazaruses and come up with uh, uh, a series of conditions here, which um, somewhat uh, protect uh, the town uh, and uh, live up to the spirit of the uh, the bylaw, uh, if not technical uh, technically with the words of the bylaw. And, uh, I, I understand Mr. Uh, Mr. Prondack uh, is on board with these uh, conditions as consistent with what he thinks is uh, 
reasonable in the intent of the bylaw, uh, though he didn't think it was um, appropriate to be, uh, to be signing letters uh, regarding applications like this. Um, he preferred that the board make findings uh, based upon evidence and um, also the, uh, the, the uh, structure or the, uh, the, the nature of this uh, particular uh, appeal. It's an appeal by Mr. and Mrs. Lazarus of an enforcement order <laughs> by Mr. Uh, Prondack. Um, but so, so long as uh, uh, these conditions are, are, are met, um, Mr. Prondack did not feel that the in enforcement order uh, was, was necessary under all of the circumstances, as long as the board made these findings. So thank you for, for all of your efforts, uh, Mr. Corcoran, in, in dealing with uh, this. And uh, we also appreciate the, the patience of uh, Mr. and Mrs. Lazarus uh, here. Uh, it, it may seem like a, a lot of fault or all, but uh, there, there are other properties out there that, um, that we want to be able to distinguish the unique facts of uh, Mr. and Mrs. Lazarus' condition and property uh, so that we don't uh, become inundated by uh, a whole flurry of similar applications, but on different facts. So uh, with that as a long-winded preamble, um, Mr. Uh, Mr. Mullen, do you want to... Uh, um, uh, well, of course, let me ask you this, Mr. Crockett. Do you have any else, anything else that you wish to add? No, I don't. Okay, Mr. Mullen, do you have any questions of Mr. Corcoran or uh, Mr. Lazarus here? So let me understand what we're doing here. So we've got the letter in front of us. Yes. The building commissioner has said that the letter is fine, but he doesn't want to sign it. Yes. Instead, he's asked us to issue a finding consistent with the letter. Yes, that, that the, uh, the accessory use here uh, is more consistent with a with a stable with family living, living quarters, yeah. but we don't have very many stables these days. But this is somewhat of a, uh, a functional equivalent of a stable, uh, even though there aren't any horses or donkeys or other uh, animals occupying the, uh, the premises. Okay. So I read the letter. I, I have some questions on the letter. I, mean, I, I understand the um, procedure here. And I, I think on balance, I'd rather have the board issue a finding, uh, you know, a series of findings, than sign a letter. I don't know that you've ever signed a letter. Well, we, we haven't. And when I saw the letter, I was, I was kind of uh, shocked because uh, we're the, uh, we're the finders of fact here, and uh, um, as such, it's, I don't think it was appropriate for, for the board to be signing letters yeah. <laughs> and then getting into contract with the building commission and all the applicants. If I, if I may on that, John, um, what I understood coming out of the, the, the hearing on the 23rd of January was that the board wanted to have a letter rather than to make a determination in the form of a variance. I know in my conversations with Mr. Prondack post hearing is that he wanted the board to make findings in the nature of a variance. Um, so I drafted the letter as I understood that was my obligation, whether the board signs the letter or, or uh, issues findings, I think is fine either way. Um, you know, we're just, I just did what I was asked to do, what I understood I was asked to do by the board. And what we're, yeah, and I understand yeah. that, but I, I, I think, I think that that's true. Uh, and, and my concern is that on the applications of this tenor, uh, particularly where you're dealing with unique properties such as uh, uh, 255 Adams Street, that uh, a policy of uh, fi finding variances uh, under these circumstances is, is not good form for the Board of Appeals uh, and, and raises more legal issues than uh, uh, making a factual finding that uh, with these conditions uh, that, that uh, they, they come closer to fitting within the uh, family living quarters in an, in an accessory building or formally a stable than, than they do um, uh, otherwise. And so <clears throat> uh, rather than granting a variance, what we would be doing here 
um, is, uh, is, is making a finding that the um, enforcement order of the building inspector under these particular facts and circumstances um, is, 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 not, uh, um, is not warranted. And it's, it's my understanding that uh, uh, that, that type of, a, of finding uh, with a uh, decision which spells these things out uh, satisfies the building inspector. That's uh, fine. Yeah, and, and gives everyone the protection. Sure. Have, so. uh, That's fine. I'm good with that. I'm next. Uh, yeah, Mr. I'm, Gray? I'm, per I'm perfectly fine with that. Okay. okay. I, I have, do have some questions, though, all right? In, in paragraph, uh, look, look, who's going to live there? The adult children and other parties or just the adult children? The, we structure it as adult children or other parties. There may be a point in time when the adult children are not there, but they may have somebody else who they want to uh, have live in uh, the pool house as a caretaker. Uh, and that my understanding was that the board wanted the notification to be given annually on July 1 as to who that adult party might be uh, so that the building commissioner had clear understanding. So that's why I crafted it as the children or others. Um, yeah, I know. I, 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 I think paragraph eight makes sense. It's appropriate for the adult children of Lazarus to serve in the capacity and be able to live in the separate quarters. But I think we're talking about something totally different if it's somebody else. I, I, think, you know, I think that's a whole other here. Because that's like a two family, that's like two houses on one property who happen to be taking care of the family. I mean, I, I don't know. It, so it, 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 Plus the Literally. That, that would be the traditional role of a caretaker. It's generally an unrelated party who's living in the premises and whose responsibility is to take care of the premises and the family living there uh, as part of their job. And, oh, and right. In this case, it wouldn't be a full-time occupation, but it might be someone who is living there um, and receiving reduced rent or nominal rent in exchange for that service. I get that, but I think this year it was about the kids living there. No, it was not. In my mind, it was a, because it was initially brought as an enforcement order with somebody with unrelated parties living in the pool house. Right, but they, they were- our request, And our request in, when I, in, in the writing at the time when I filed the appeal was that they be authorized to remain in the premises. They sensed after the appeal was filed, they moved out. And the understanding was that the adult children were moving in this summer. And so the, I think some of the focus of the discussion was adult children. There? No one's living there now. The adult children are moving in this summer. So what you're saying is it's possible that other, well, let me ask you this. Is it the adult children in their immediate families or just the adult children? Right now, it's the, it is the adult daughter and her husband. They have no children. Okay. Um, you want the approval to have adult children or other parties, but you're Correct. giving a representation that right now, for the purpose of who's living there, you're saying it's the adult children. I'm saying for the purpose, yes, it will be the adult children, and the notification that would go to Mr. Prondack in accordance with this letter on July 1 would name the adult children who would be living in there. And annually, I think the, the as we discuss, as, as I understood the, the board's finding in January was that we had to identify who that party would be every July one, right. as long as the Lazaruses maintain ownership uh, and, and and or lived in the dwelling. I'm just telling you, the more the more that this gets further away from the family, the more it feels like there's two houses on that lot to me. So I think we're going to be really careful here. Let so, me let me just jump in, uh, Jeffrey, if I could, uh, because I think what you're say, saying makes some sense. Uh, Mr. Gray, do you want to be heard on this, uh, uh, this particular issue? Sure. Um, what I recall from the hearing in January was that s Section 3B1F allows... Th there were sort of two issues that we were looking at. The, 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 there's an accessory use that says that you can't have, um, shall not ex include dwellings except 
as may be constructed as part of a garage or stable to be occupied by an employee of the owner. So one of the issues we were talking about was could a child be an employee for this purpose, right? And the second issue was, could part of the compensation for this employee be the consideration of the of reduced rent? Is that I, I think, and I think we agreed that both yeah. of those things could be so. Right. So I think that was, if, to, uh, to Mr. Mullen's point, is if, if we can keep it, I mean, maybe part of what the findings need to say is that we're, we're, we're saying that for purposes of this subsection F, a child could be an employee and the part of the consideration for that employment could be reduced rent. If it was an unrelated party, Mr. Mullen, doesn't that uh, make it less of a problem? Because it could be a, just an employee? I guess that's right. I just wanted to be more consistent with what we were, what we were hearing. Yeah. Right. That's what we did. So. I, let me. I, I'm good with that. Let's, we'll just make the. We'll just make the finding the right way. Let, let me. Let me ask a couple of questions. Um, it is true that the caretaker has to provide the services, right? Yes. And the separate quarters is the pool house, right? Yes. And the pool house. The former. It was a former stable that was converted to a pool. To a pool. Call it a converted stable. Is that what the building commission is calling it, John? Uh, he said it was consistent. He's calling consistent it a with that construction. Yeah. What about limiting the number of people who can live in the converted stable? It's still, it, it's got one it's one floor inhabitant. I think it's got two bedrooms. Um, I think we should limit the number overall number of people who live there. Is that possible here? Nick, you need to unmute. I'm not talking. I'm sorry. No, the other Nick, Mike. Oh. Sorry. I think he's trying to talk, but he's muted. He's there he is. Go down the bottom left and you uh Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, when, when we when we acquired the property, uh there were there were stables, you know, there were all farm implements. I mean there was it was a stable. There's no and, and the carriage house on the on the upper level. We'll call uh, it we converted it. What about limiting the number of people who live there, who will be providing the services? Is that acceptable? That's fine, sure. So what, what would you say? I, I mean, right now it would be, you know, two people, but you know, people, people that live together sometimes create more people. So. <laughs> you say three? Uh, it's fine, three, uh, four would be probably more reasonable, but you know, whatever. Yeah, whatever the point adult. is. Two adults. Four people. Okay. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm interested in the last paragraph. Um, I don't know what it means to sell to an unrelated party. If they put the property into a realty trust, right now they own it outright, but if they put it for estate planning purposes into a realty trust and continue to reside in it, they would be the beneficial owners. Yeah. This wouldn't be title owners. All right, so I think it's, I think that's okay. We've already got the carve out for the trust. Can't we just say if you either sell it or move, this yes. goes away, but we have the carve out for the trust? Yes, if they, as long as they are inhabiting the main dwelling. Yeah, no, yeah. 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 Right. That's what I intended to say. No, it's okay. I just wanted to, I mean, it was kind of like that unrelated party. You don't quite know what's going on there, right. especially right. the car bomb. So I would support this. I mean, I'd love, love, love to hear from Nick and you, John, but those are my questions. Okay, let's, uh, thank you, Mr. Mullins. Sorry. Appreciate very much. Don't be sorry. We appreciate your, uh, your comments. And Mr. Gray, do you want to be heard on these conditions? Um. <laughs> I'm still a little unclear what exactly we're doing. We're, 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 are we signing a letter or are we basically no, no, we're making a finding here yeah. that, that, that uh, the structure is uh, substantial based upon the evidence that is the I, I consistent with the stable uh, as long as uh, certain conditions uh, are agreed to when those conditions right. are and, uh, and the enforcement order is, uh, is, is not upheld. So we're basically um, trying to- We're dismissing the enforcement order. Okay. And we're, but we're finding basically that the, re as, as reasons for that, 
that the, the unique facts of this situation uh, basically make it fit within the subsection, subsection uh, whatever it is, F of, this, of, of the bylaw, right? I mean, is, we're sort of finding that the current condition of this thing is, is akin to a garage or stable, and that the, the, the fact that the, a son, a related person, is serving as the employee, right? That's exactly right. For this purpose, and that they're getting the, that the, the, the reduced rent is, uh, is compensation for the employment, is part of the consideration for the employment, right? That, that's correct with all of the uh, subsidiary facts that uh, yeah. Attorney Corcoran sets okay. forward. Uh, in, in this middle to the board. Right. I, I, I would tend to support this so long as it's, we're basically making the, fi making findings in our decision that it's, that the unique facts of this situation are akin to the language of that subsection F of the bylaw, so that this, this case fits within uh, an accessory use. Right? Is, yes. Mr. Mullen, is that sort of what you think? Yeah. Okay, and it, if, if that's what we're doing, I'm okay with it. Okay, sounds good. Okay, so um, Mr. Corcoran, do you have anything else you'd like to add here? No, I would appreciate your, uh, your um, digging into this the way you have. This is a unique, it is a unique case. Um, it is until the next unique case. Right, well, <laughs> that, that's, always, that's always true. Every case is, has, its own, um, but I do know that the planning board is. What are you going to say? Remember, the, remember what we did up on Adam Street? <laughs> what did I? I? I have in the in the 15 years I've been practicing in the before the Milton boards, I've never used one as the basis for another. I can't say that I won't do it in the future, but I've never used one argument as the basis for another. I think every case is its own rise and falls on its own unique. Well, I would we appreciate that. And that. We, uh, we understand that uh, this is a uh, very, very unique uh, property that uh, you really don't see very much these days. And it's, uh, uh, it's a gorgeous property. And, uh, but under the particular circumstances uh, that Mr. and Mrs. Lazarus have, uh, have expressed, uh, uh, there are unique reasons why this is being done. And so, uh, uh, it, Mr. Prondack, I think uh, on uh, further reassessment and reviewing uh, the materials that Mr. Corcoran has assembled and like we're looking at the facts, saw that uh, this may be a, a closer uh, uh, question of interpretation of the statute and a kind of a unique interpretation uh, on a very unique property. And uh, that I think believes that uh, with, with these conditions, um, the, uh, the, the town is, uh, is uh, reasonably well protected. Um, yeah, and uh, we, we are establishing the uh, uniqueness of this particular parcel under these unique facts, and hopefully uh, uh, we restrict this decision to these uh, to these facts. So, uh, if you have nothing further to add, Mr. Uh, Corcoran, uh, uh, all those uh, in favor of making uh, the, the finding and the interpretation under Section F here that uh, that the uh, even though the language is somewhat old-fashioned, this was a stable at one point in time. It's been improved over the years and you can see why that's a beautiful section of Milton and with the uh, agreement of uh, the uh, the applicants uh, these uh, conditions will be incorporated into a decision um, uh, denying the uh, the enforcement action and uh, uh, hopefully uh, uh, getting a result that that makes sense uh, for uh, the Lazarus family and the town of Milton so uh, all, all those in favor of so finding, uh, uh, please say aye. 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 So uh, Mr. Corcoran, thanks for all of your, your help here. We'll uh, uh, do our best uh, to uh, uh, stay within the reasonable parameters of these uh, conditions. We may, we may tweak the, uh, the verbiage just a little bit, or, um, but uh, it, I think it'll be very pleased and hopefully Mr. and Mrs. Lazarus will as well. I certainly appreciate your taking the time and, and, 
and as you know, I'm a lawyer, I'm a retired lawyer, but I, uh, I, I, I sincerely understand and appreciate uh, the fact that you need to deal with this in a, in a, in a way that is consistent with uh, the, the, the history of uh, the property as well as uh, the constraints of the of the zoning bylaws, and I and I appreciate your efforts. Yeah, and at the same time, you've got to make some common sense. And coming to a right. foolish decision, interpreting language that's 16, 80 years old, uh, uh, that doesn't benefit the town, and it certainly is a disservice to to you and your wife. And I congratulate oh, thank you. you. Since I'm 60, somewhere between 60 and 80, I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> and I congratulate Mr. Corcoran, who really worked hard on this, and uh, he did came to a, a very sensible result. So congratulations. Uh, Thanks very much. I appreciate thank it. Thank you all. Appreciate cool. your efforts. Thank you. Nice to, Take care. Nice to be with you. Bye-bye. Okay. We're going to Thanks, adjourn Dad. this particular uh, hearing. Yeah. I'm Mayor Hibble. I just may have swept portions of that file. So before you leave, Mr. Mullen, give me two seconds. Hey, I don't mean give me. No, 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 no. I'm just, no, I'm not. I'm just saying no. I just say, no, I, 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 I folded a portion of the file into my crystal notes here, and I didn't want that to happen. I'm so intent on organization. Okay, so that uh, is hearing number uh, two. And, and here is hearing. Uh, Mrs. McGettrick, I'm sorry we've uh, we've kept you for uh, such a long period of, uh, of time. We're going to call to order our third uh, hearing of the evening, and uh, uh, this is also a continued hearing. Uh, it's the application of J Mass or GMAS, I don't know how you pronounce it, the one LLC in the Elliott Physical Therapy, uh, operating a uh, physical therapy office at, uh, I believe, the entire first floor of 475 Adams Street in Milton. Uh, this application was, uh, was dated to December 9th, 2019. Uh, we had a hearing on this, on this application. It... Uh, <laughs> the folder doesn't have the date of the hearing, but it was sometime in, in January. It may be the date, same date as the other uh, uh, hearing. And so we, uh, um, what we did is we, we granted uh, the, uh, the use variance that uh, Mrs. Uh, uh, McGettrick uh, uh, was uh, seeking um, and the sign, dealing with signage and, and all of that. And there were uh, questions that were raised <clears throat> regarding the uh, the hours that uh, the the business was seeking to operate under. Um, and um, regretfully, the hearing was so complicated and took so long, we really didn't have a, an opportunity to discuss the hours in any great detail. So, with the uh, the kind consent of uh, Marion McGettrick uh, uh, and the applicants. Uh, everyone agreed that uh, the, the most uh, reasonable and fair way of dealing with the issue uh, would be to continue the hearing uh, to, uh, to tonight and, and give the applicants uh, the opportunity of, uh, and Mrs. McGettrick of conferring with neighbors and uh, um, to, to see if some reasonable uh, accommodation could be made uh, so that we could um, finally put together a uh, a decision um, on hours and on signage and on use and, and um, uh, let uh, uh, the, the applicants conduct business in, instead of spending a lot of time on the legal fault or all that we're dealing with here. Um, so Mrs. Uh, let, me, let me just say for the record uh, uh, that my name is John Leonard, I'm Chairman of the Board of Appeals with me. Um, is uh, Jeffrey uh, Mullen uh, and on uh, Zoom under the video system we're using here um, is uh, uh, member Nicholas uh, Gray. Um, so Mrs. McGettrick, uh, do you want to uh, bring us up to date as to uh, where everyone stands on, on the uh, hours portion of this application? 
uh, I'm, I'm sorry, Marion, can you uh, hit the little button there? And... Can you hear me now? Yes, you're no longer silent. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> a little different from the other meeting I've attended. Um, okay, thank you very much. I'm Marion McKetrick. And um, after the hearing in January, um, the applicants agreed to go back to their neighbors who had sent a letter with some concerns about the change of hours, as well as other issues. Uh, and they mailed a letter to them on February 14th and invited them to a meeting. It was supposed to be at Novara Restaurant on the evening of March 25th. Unfortunately, that was right in the middle of the COVID, COVID um, shutdown. So that meeting did not take place. And instead, Patty Elliott contacted neighbors for whom she had a telephone number. She was able to directly really reach three of them and she left manage messages with many others. And each of the neighbors Patty spoke with said they had no objection to granting the requested relief for change in hours. Um, so, you know, in my opinion, this is similar to, th this is a modification of a variance that you granted already. The basis for the variance um, is that you can allow a commercial use in a res residential district under particular circumstances. And the reasoning is that Multiple factors may affect a particular site that distinguish that site from other properties in the residential district, such as proximity to other commercial uses to a commercial district um, or other characteristics of the parcel. And there are a series of cases, appellate cases that have found that under those particular circumstances in, in each case, um, that it is possible to grant a variance and that it meets the, the uh, standard for a variance. And I, I provided a letter to the board, you may have it, and I provided three examples of cases. So here we're modifying the hours that were granted already by the Board of Appeals. And the reasoning for the change in hours is simply that at the time you granted the variance, you did not know who the tenant would be. And this particular tenant is a physical therapy office and they need to be able to serve their clients before and after work. Um, they're not just like a law office where they have nine to five hours. On the other hand, they don't serve clients on Sundays um, or on major holidays and they only need limited hours on Saturdays. So what we're proposing is that you modify the hours that you granted in your original variance and instead of 8 to 6 p.m. Monday through Friday, 9 to 4 Saturday, Sunday, and holidays, these applicants would like to be allowed to be open 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. Monday through Thursday, 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. Friday, 8 to 2 p.m. on Saturday, and not on Sundays or major holidays. So the net result is that, that the hours are almost the same in terms of total hours, but, but they're arranged differently for these applicants. The other uh, issue that was concerning neighbors, but we've responded to, is that by changing these hours, we're not increasing traffic or um, traffic flow into this area because Elliott Physical Therapy already has an office across the street, and they will close that office if they get these modified hours. Um, so the same traffic's going to be coming into the area. It's just going to be turning in a different direction to the right instead of to the left. Um, so, you know, I think there's justification for the modification. I think that with this type of very specific use variance that the board granted that in the future with a different tenant, it's possible that the tenant, a new tenant is going to come back and want another type of set of hours. I think this is just uh, a characteristic of this type of use variance and that you're going to have to consider it. I do think this particular request is very reasonable. It doesn't really add much in, the, in terms of time that they'll be open. It will be quieter on the weekend with these hours. Um, and I think that's a benefit to the, to the residential neighborhood. Well, uh, great. Thank you very much, uh, Mrs. McGetrick. I should just add that uh, uh, Mrs. McGetrick has uh, filed a, uh, a letter setting forth these views uh, on April 15th, 2020, um, and setting a precedent, legal precedent from the uh, appeals court and from the Supreme Judicial Court uh, uh, authorizing this uh, type of use and uh, the, uh, the type of uh, uh, hours that are being requested. And uh, Mrs. McGetrick has also filed with us 
of the letter of February 14, 2020 from Patty and Daryl Elliott, uh, which was sent to the neighbors. Uh, and it's uh, very uh, specific in terms of what the hours are, the proposed hours, and this uh, uh, contains all of the information that the neighbors would need uh, to uh, consider uh, the Elliott's position here. And in further providing that uh, if anyone has any questions, they can call uh, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Elliott uh, on, on the cell phone or attend the Rivera meeting and uh, otherwise uh, send an email to uh, uh, the uh, Elliott. Uh, and, and so uh, um, we thank you for, for doing that. It's, uh, it's, it's very helpful. Um, let me just ask uh, Mr. Gray, do you? Uh, do you have any questions of uh, Mrs. McGettrick or uh, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Elliott uh, regarding the uh, issue of ours? Uh, no, actually, I think they, uh, uh, Mrs. McGettrick made a very um, compelling uh, argument for why uh, the hours need to be adapted to this particular tenant, and um, I don't have any. I don't have any further questions about it. Okay, Mr. Jeffrey Mullen, do you have any questions? Uh, regarding these hours of Mrs. Uh, McGettrick uh, or uh, the, uh, the applicants. Do you have in touch with Mr. Scorgi? And no, her name is Mrs. Sergi. Sergi. Did, did you hear that question, uh, Mrs. Yes. yes. Um, the first person who was contacted after the meeting was Mrs. Sergi. They, she was consulted as to how to set up a meet the neighbors. Um, that's how the Nov Novara meeting came about. Um, I'd have to leave it to Daryl and um, Patty, who are here to answer any further, okay. provide any further background about the contact with Mrs. Sergi, but there definitely was contact. Mrs. Sergi, um, certainly, I spoke to her on many occasions, and I even um, she had a question about a sign as you exited our building. I wanted there to be a no low turn sign, so we um, made sure the landlord installed that. I sent a picture of it when it was installed. Um, she had some issues about when bus stop pickups were, and we spoke about those. I got the bus stop pickup information from the high school, and we, our morning patients really wouldn't impact that. But we've been in constant contact with her, ad answering and addressing questions, and I think that sort of relieved her stress. Did she, did she say anything about the hours? She did, she did not say anything about the hours. Okay. Negatively, you know. Okay. No further questions. Okay, well, I don't, I don't have any further questions. I think uh, uh, I, I think uh, that you, uh, along with uh, Mrs. Uh, McGettrick, who's uh, very experienced in these matters, uh, took the right uh, avenue here um, in, in delaying this, this hearing uh, so that the um, issue of ours could be further thought out and then and, and discussed. Uh, I could just remember vaguely that the, uh, uh, the original hearing here was, uh, uh, there was a little more contest and uh, uh, difficulty than would, is, is normally the case. And um, we, we know Mrs. Sergi didn't have the opportunity at that uh, hearing to uh, uh, go into the hours in any detail. And so uh, I, I think it was very thoughtful of him to agree to uh, delay this for six or eight weeks, whatever it has been, uh, so that uh, the neighbors could be contacted and Mrs. Sergi uh, um, could ask any questions and answer any questions. I think it's uh, uh, the, the right way to have a uh, healthy business in this neighborhood where the neighbors are uh, so concerned with many of the issues which affect their uh, residential properties. So, um, uh, if uh, if you have nothing further to add, Mrs. McGettrick and uh, Mr. Mullen doesn't, and Mr. Gray doesn't, and I don't. Let me just ask, uh, just for the sake of the record here, um, is is there anybody uh, uh, out there in, in virtual land who wishes to, to be uh, uh, heard in support? Uh, of the applicant's request uh, for the hours that forth in Mrs. McGettrick's uh, letter of April 15th. And there's no such person present. Is there anyone present uh, who, uh, um, either in virtual land or on the telephone, I guess, who um, has any objections 
um, to uh, the the hours of being uh, requested by Mr. Um, and um, this is Elliot. Okay, this is nobody uh, present uh, or virtually present or otherwise on the telephone who has any objections. Here. So let's uh, let's close the evidence portion of the hearing on the hours. Um, and uh, do you have anything further you want to be heard? Of? Mr. Gray, do you want to be heard on anything further? Uh, no, I'm fine. Okay. So all, all those in favor of uh, uh, amending the variance uh, that we've granted, I don't think it's actually issued. So maybe we'll just issue one variance for both uh, sides of the street. Uh, but uh, granting the uh, the hours of uh, use uh, as, as set forth in uh, Mr. and Mrs. Elliott's letters to the uh, letter to the neighbors dated February 14, 2020. So all those in favor, please say aye. 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 So uh, congratulations, uh, Mrs. McGettrick and Mr. and Mrs. Elliott. Uh, Thank you. Thanks for your patience and, and, and hard work. Um, I, I believe that uh, uh, Board Member Gray uh, has the uh, first part of this application and will uh, uh, request the, the work. Yeah, that, that's wonderful. And we can get this uh, filed in, in, a, in a timely manner and uh, um, wish you uh, both uh, the best of luck in your uh, uh, in your new venture. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much for everything. Thank you for all your work you're doing. And uh, stay safe and be well, everyone out there. Well, so we'll, 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 we'll get through it. We'll, we'll do that. And we, uh, if we have uh, any uh, unrelated uh, COVID-19 or whatever it is, uh, uh, issues, uh, you'll be the first physiotherapist. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank Thanks you. a lot. Okay. okay. We'll, we'll Thank you so everyone. Bye now. Thank Mr. Leonard, um, yeah. Do you want me to, uh, they have been waiting a long time to get their sign up. Do you, anybody, does anybody want me to draft this decision in some rough form or would that help? Or? Well, I, I always think that's a terrific idea. Uh, and it, uh, it, it sure. I'm, so yeah, I've, it, I've got, it's in process, but if you want to always happy to uh, see what you put together, Marion. Well, that'll be great. We'll have two versions. So you can take the best one, which will be yours. Thank you. <laughs> I'm not going to comment on that, but thank you very much. It's a generous offer. And uh, it, 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 it always does expedite the, uh, the, the, the prompt issue of the decision. So we thank you. Thank you. Uh, have, a, have a good night, folks. OK, you too. Thank you. Yes. So we did get at the end um I connected with John is that no because it does have any available um we did get a, a letter written letter of um, support from Bill Clark for this next week. Okay, great. I got it as I was leaving today. Yeah, that's fine. Um, no big deal. Um, so Nick probably just needs to yeah. Okay. Uh, now we have uh, Mr. Mr. Rowan, who's going to participate in this yeah, hearing call, on the phone call. So yeah. he's the phone there. Is sure that right? That. Hey, Miss, oh, yes. Mr. Rowan. Yes, we're here. Oh, great, great. Is uh, is uh, Mrs. Rowan there as well? Yes, I am. Okay, yes. great. Uh, uh, what uh, let, let me do some preliminaries and uh, we'll we'll give this some uh, some focus and then uh, you know, hear from you in support of this application. Okay, so we're, we're going to call to order. This is our fourth hearing uh, of the evening, and this is the application of John and Mary Rowan. They reside at 18 Jeremiah's Way in Milton, Massachusetts, um, and uh, Mr. and Mrs. Rowan were granted a a special permit by the Board of Appeals back in the July 18th, 1996, uh, to allow uh, the uh, mother of Mrs. Rowan and Sheehan to occupy a temporary in-law apartment. Um, that special permit uh, expired four years later on July 19th, 2020. And, um, and this happens in a lot of these uh, uh, applications, uh, the uh, uh, 
uh, special permit uh, lapsed uh, and, and wasn't ex extended. And then um, uh, the building commissioner checking his records uh, um, sent a notice of the expiration of the special permit uh, on or about July 30, 2019. Um, and uh, uh, shortly uh, thereafter, the uh, applicant uh, filed this within application uh, in order to continue the use of the uh, in-law apartment uh, by his uh, son, uh, Jeffrey. Um, so that's the nature of this particular hearing. My name is John Leonard. I'm chairman of the Board of Appeals. Uh, also present uh, is uh, Nick Gray, a board member of the uh, Board of Appeals, and Jeffrey Mullen, another board member of the uh, Appeals Board. Uh, this uh, hearing is, uh, is, is being conducted uh, by, by telephone uh, under the statute. We've had uh, three previous uh, uh, so-called virtual um, hearings using the Zoom system. So this is at least uh, our first hearing of the evening dealing with the, uh, the telephone uh, aspect of the application. So as evidence for the application, we're going to have the application. We're going to have Mr. Uh, uh, Prondack's uh, letter of December 31 to uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Roman, uh, July 30th, 2019. We've got the original um, special permit that was uh, sought in February of 1996, and we have the decision in that case. We have a list of abutters, um, all of which will have evidence uh, at, at this hearing. Uh, the board also has received a, uh, a letter dated April 16, 2020. Uh, it's to the Board of Appeals and it's from Wim B. Clark Jr., a residence, the resident of 116 Ridgewood Avenue in Milton. And he writes to support uh, the in-law apartment request by John and Mary uh, Rowan. He says that he's known the Rowans for a long period of time. And he encourages an affirmative vote of the board uh, on, on their uh, request. So we, we thank Mr. Clark for, uh, for his uh, letter. We have that as part. That's very nice, yeah. So uh, That's very nice. it was, it was very nice of Mr. Clark. He's uh, well known to uh, uh, the board and, and, and the town. Um, so uh, I guess uh, welcome to a telephonic presence uh, uh, for the board. Uh, I'm sorry we kept you so long as the last hearing. Um, so why don't you uh, tell us about your application and uh, uh, why the uh, board should uh, grant a, uh, a new uh, a special permit allowing this use? Okay, well, uh, we, we were probably not, we weren't even aware that uh, we were supposed to renew this. I don't know if that's typical, but... It is, you know, it is. And it passed, typical. Uh, she and it passed away in 2013, I believe. Yeah. And uh, we just weren't aware. And uh, my daughter's been using it. My son would like to come home from college and use it till he gets established with what he's going to do. So that was the main reason we wanted to put it in his name and to clear everything out. Okay. And uh, wh where is your son going to school? He's up in University of Rochester, New York. He's oh. quarantined now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's a, that's, that's a nice school. It's a wonderful school. I know some people who have... Uh, who graduated from the University of Rochester and gone into uh, uh, the medical sciences. So it's a, it's a great school. Um, and, and so uh, uh, when would he start to occupy the, uh, the unit? Well, he, could, he's, he graduated there and he's getting his PhD now. So he's probably another six or seven months, hopefully, if he can finish everything up. Wow, congratulations. That's, a, that's really, you should be very proud. That's wonderful. Oh, we are. It's been a long road. But... Well, it did. It, 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 it has been. I wish the uh, the circumstances were uh, uh, were better <clears throat> with current uh, health conditions. But uh, yeah. Um, so, do you have you uh, had an opportunity to talk to you, any of your neighbors about this? Or uh... yes, we spoke to the border lotties who are directly across the street. Okay. Kathy Carey, who's in a butter down on uh, Patricia Drive, I believe. Yeah. Uh, the Wilmots and uh, the Rileys. The I mean, we—I didn't speak to the Wilmots or the Rileys directly about this, but we've talked to them 
lately, and they've never never mentioned anything negative mentioned. Or, or positive. Okay, and, and so I, I think everybody's okay with it. Yeah, right? and I, I say you haven't received any adverse comments uh, about your son occupying premises under these circumstances. No, 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 not at all. They, they, I mean, they like my. They know my son. They like my son. It's not an issue. Okay, um, that's that's great. Um, <clears throat> let me. Uh, let, let me see if uh, my, do you have anything else you'd like to add in support of uh, your application? Okay, I'm gonna- uh, No, we just apologize for not being aware that we were supposed to renew it, you know. I, no, uh, it's, 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 it's something that um, back in 1996, I suppose, if you, you had a computer, you would have put the date in it and you would have uh, discovered it. But it, most, most people, this uh, particular section of the bylaw tends to, uh, uh, to slip uh, to slip by, right. I do have a question. Would that would would I need to renew this annually now if this is approved? No, 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 no. But uh, it can only be approved according to the statute for a term of four years. Um, four years. Okay. There's a provision under the statute that uh, every year you just have to send uh, a form to the building inspector. Uh, essentially saying that your son still lives there or who's living there. Um, okay. And that essentially nothing else has changed. Um, and you just file that on an annual basis. And uh, then what, what you normally do is uh, have your son put in his computer. He sounds like, uh, have him put uh, like three years and five months uh, from the date uh, this uh, special permit is, is allowed if it if it gets allowed um, yep. that that it should be renewed and if you uh, if you file a simple application to renew it and all the facts are the same it gets renewed uh, in a very informal setting and you don't have to go through the rigmarole that uh, that you have to for the, for this uh, expired permit right i understand Okay, so uh, let, let me just ask my, uh, my colleagues, uh, Mr. Mullen, do you have any uh, questions of uh, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Uh, Rowan regarding this particular application? So I have a comment and a, I have a question and a comment. The okay. question is, is it only sons who live there? Could you hear Mr. Mullen? His question is, is it only a son, uh, Jeffrey, who's going to occupy the uh, in-law apartment? Just him, yes. Okay. So my comment is, and we've talked about this before, and I'd like to figure out a way to put this on, um, uh, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm, I tend to support this because um, I've commented on this on several applications. Every unit matters with the housing crisis that the region has, not just Milton. Um, so the, every, you know, if, 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 uh, if the Rowan son wasn't living here, he'd have to live somewhere else. Uh, so I, I appreciate the support, but I don't think it fits the bylaw very well because there is this temporary uh, requirement out there. And I, I really think we should, we should somehow communicate to the town administrator that the, the town take a look at the temporary in-law apartment provision of the bylaw. We just show with it. Um, and I think there's tension between the policy regarding trying to address we get as many units in the town as reasonably possible. And the way that this is written, this is really calls for a conversion at the end of the use, which is what the ad says as well. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not criticizing the Romans, uh, but I, I'm, I'm frustrated with the bylaw because I think the bylaw needs to be evaluated by people who know what they're doing. And, you know, not the Board of Appeals, and not that the Board of Appeals doesn't know what it's doing, I don't mean that. <laughs> Somebody who is really can speak to the policy of the town and present it to town meeting for the purpose of an amendment to the bylaw, which I'm happy to support. I'm happy to advance that with the town administrator, but I don't want to get ahead of the entire board. But that's my overall okay. comment. So I appreciate your uh, your comments. Uh, uh, Mr. Gray, do you have any questions of Mr. and Mrs. Rowan on this application? Uh, I don't actually, and I, I second Mr. Mullen's comments, but um, I, I don't have any further questions. Okay, I, I, I don't have any further questions, and I, I think Mr. Mullen is correct in his comments. So, uh, these are issues which uh, uh, get discussed, but usually nothing ever gets done. Uh, so they need to be addressed at this point. Uh, it may, may, maybe they do. So uh, with all of that as a, a preamble here, let me just ask a couple of, uh, 
uh, pertinent questions. Uh, the, the first one is, um, we're conducting this uh, hearing telephonically. Uh, so is, is there anybody out there uh, in telephone land who wishes to uh, speak in support of the, the uh, Rowan's uh, application for this uh, special permit or an in-law apartment? Okay, and the, the record indicates there's no such person present. Um, is there anybody out there uh, who uh, wishes to be heard uh, in opposition to this uh, application to allow uh, the Rowan son Jeffrey to occupy, <coughs> excuse me, the in-law apartment? Okay, and, and so there is no such person out there. Um, so, uh, unless you have anything further uh, to, to say, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Rowan, what we'll do is we'll uh, end the evidence portion of this hearing and uh, see uh, and discuss it in open session and actually take a vote on this application uh, right here and now. So, uh, Mr. Uh, Jeffrey Mullen, do you want to be here at first? We have to support the application. and. Um appreciate the support of taking a look at the bylaw as well. Uh, Mr. Gray, do you have any uh, questions of uh, Stryker? Do you have anything uh, that uh, you want to say uh, regarding this application? Uh, thank you. I, I would tend to support the application. It's clear that um, there, there's no record of any complaints when this was uh, formally occupied by uh, Mrs. Sheehan and I, and I I'm sure that uh, going forward, being occupied by their son, it'll it'll um, work in a similar manner. So I would I would tend to support the application. Okay, well I, I support the application as well. I think uh, uh, this is uh, the triumphal return for for Jeffrey if he's pursuing a PhD, and it's uh, yeah, hopefully <laughs> well, I, yeah, hopefully too. But it's just a wonderful place to uh, uh, come home. Uh, but still have the little bit of independence that the in Laura. Right, right, right. I agree. Uh, we look to it. Oh yeah, I'm sure you you do. So uh, uh, all those in favor of granting this application for an in law uh, apartment with the usual conditions, uh, uh, please say aye. 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 So uh, that's a unanimous vote. Three in favor. Nobody opposed. So uh, congratulations on uh, your special permit. Um, well, thank you, you very much. much. Really appreciate it. Yeah, and I'm sorry for all the rigmarole you had to go through here. And uh, as I say, just uh, make a computer note uh, once once you get the uh, uh, special permit. I should tell you one thing, and, and that is that uh, uh, e even though there's been no opposition to this application, and uh, we grant it, um, that uh, we're going to write a decision that's filed with the town clerk. Um, and and the, the law is that even though nobody's appeared in opposition to your request here, uh, before the special permit becomes final, a 20-day period has to go by, okay? And so, I'm fair, I'm fair. And so when, when that 20-day period goes by, we, we file this decision that we're going to write, hopefully get it done in the next uh, two or three weeks. We, file, we sign it. You'll get a copy of it. Uh, Miss uh, Sutton here files it with the town clerk, and then at the end of uh, 20 days, we get a certificate from the town clerk that nobody has appealed the special permit, so it becomes final, okay? Uh, very good. Now, you've got an obligation that's really an important one here, is when that becomes final, uh, get a certified copy of uh, the, the board's decision and file it with the Norfolk County Registry of Deeds. And that may cost okay. 20, 25 bucks or something like that. Uh, uh, Ms. Uh, Sutton or, or Joe Prondack, our building commissioner, they didn't know exactly what the filing fee is. May depend on the number of pages in the decision. But, but file that with the Registry of Deeds so your special permit is activated and protected for the four years, okay? Very good. Great. Yeah. Thank you. So if you have any questions, just talk with uh, Beverly Sutton and she'll help you throughout the entire process. And thanks for your patience tonight and congratulations on your special permit. Thank you very much. And thank you, Beverly. has been very helpful throughout this. Well, Beverly is always helpful and uh, <laughs> it's a complicated process and there are a lot of uh, technicalities you've got to observe and 
uh, Deb is helpful that everyone uh, touches all the bases. So, okay, thank, thank you very much. Again. Have a great day. I get that on. You too. You too. Take care. Bye. Bye.